Hello, hello everybody on Facebook. Um, I'm about to film a Facebook Live with Rob Pender. He is a hyperbaric oxygen specialist, but I wanted to do things a little bit differently with this episode. Instead of beginning the Facebook Live as I begin recording the audio podcast, I wanted to start the live a little bit early so I can show you the actual room where Rob does his hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Look, here's Rob. Say hi. 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 hi, Jason. Hi, Damon. Thanks for joining us. So here's the tank. Look at this, everyone. This is a hyperbaric oxygen therapy tank. It's Rob sitting in front of it. Because like I said, we're about to record uh, this latest episode of Health Hackers with Rob, who is a hyperbaric oxygen therapy specialist. And he's going to be with us for the next 30 minutes. So I'm going to sit down now and position this camera so that you can all see Rob. So if I put that there, you can see Rob, you can see a bit of the tank. This is the microphone that I'm gonna be using for the audio podcast, which I'm about to start recording now. So if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I'm keeping an eye on the audio recording to check everything's okay. So, um, Rob, are you happy to start the audio podcast? I'm fine, ready for you. Okay, so let me hit record and I'll do my little intro and then we can get going. So this is episode 15, which is already, already gone so fast. Wow. Thank you for having us in here. You squeezed us in between clients. Yes, I'm always busy. Any, anyone famous coming in today? Um, You're probably not allowed to tell us, are you? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll we're, try, we're, we're trying to treat everybody the same. Yeah, everyone, everyone's yeah. equal. Yeah. Everyone's equal when they come and see Rob. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to Health Hackers episode 15. I'm Gemma Evans and this is my series devoted to getting inside the minds of some of the most pioneering figures in health and wellness. Today I am with hyperbaric expert Robert Pender at his centre in London. If you're listening to the audio podcast, check out healthhackers.uk online or my Facebook page, which is Gemma Evans Broadcaster, to see the video version of this episode. And then you can get a look at the hyperbaric oxygen tank inside the clinic where we are now. Uh, Rob's with us for the next 30 minutes. So if you're watching on Facebook, ask us a question. I'm going to be looking at all your comments and questions. We'll be talking about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. What is it? Who has it? And why? Uh, if you're watching live on Facebook, maybe you want to tag someone who could benefit from listening to this Facebook Live. So Rob, let's begin. Let's go back to basics, okay? So it's been a while since I had a session with you, a hyperbaric oxygen session Quite with some you. Time. But when I used to post about it on social media, there was always interest. People always wanted to know what on earth I was doing lying in a tank. Can you outline for us what happens from the moment a client comes through the door? What's involved? in a hyperbaric oxygen therapy session? Okay, the first thing when the patients come in, I obviously um, do a consultation with them. Um, I get a medical background uh, history. Um, I ask them very important questions um, about their health, if they've had a history of brain seizures, um, if they've had a collapsed lung, if they've had a perforated eardrum, things that can affect putting people through an oxygen hyperbaric session. Um, I then uh, usually uh, take their oxygen saturation, ch checking that they're saturating oxygen well in their body. If they have a low reading, then I start looking at the possibility of respiratory problems or heart problems, that they're not t taking in enough oxygen. Um, we take blood pressure and heart rate, and then we actually scan um, the, the patient's ears, even though if a patient says that there is no problem with their ears, they don't get any problems when they're flying, um, we don't leave it to chance, we actually do a proper scan of the inner ear and that is photographed and videoed. So then what, so at what point do they get in the tank? After all that, yeah, yeah. they then go in the tank and uh, then explain to them why hyperbaric compared to ordinary uh, oxygen in the air which we have just now, which is 21%. What's the difference having oxygen hyperbaric in normal atmosphere? And it's quite simple, threefold. 
Okay. It's anti-inflammatory because under pressure, any inflammation in the body, if you've got an injury, if you've overtrained and you've got lactic acid in your, uh, your Just limbs, moving the microphone closer to you. Um, any part of it, any sickness in your body, if it's fatigue in the mind, there's inflammation there, that actually can slow down the circulation in your body. So first thing, under pressure in an oxygen tank, inflammation is anti-inflammatory. The second thing that happens in the oxygen chamber, because oxygen is a gas and under pressure, gas dissolves very rapidly into fluid. So body fluids, haemoglobin, plasma, lymph fluids, then are saturated with oxygen and that is then delivered around the body and the parts of the body that's been having less oxygen because of injury or sickness then gets the boost of oxygen and thirdly it raises the white blood cell count which builds up the immune system and helps fight some chronic diseases. But let's, but that, I mean that's a lot to take in. So, it is, so yeah. somebody is lying in a tank. Yeah. And they've got uh, like a mask. Like they've got a mask on. So you wear a mask. You lie in the tank for about an hour. An hour. In the and tank. you're you're inhaling. Is it pure oxygen or is it about ninety something? Ninety five point seven. Ninety five point seven percent pure, pure oxygen. oxygen. Yes, medical and oxygen. And typically we would be taking in twenty one percent. Normally. In normal in, air. Uh, normal air. Yeah. And we can raise uh, the amount of dissolved oxygen uh, into the bloodstream under hyperbaric conditions. So, so it's where, better delivery of oxygen. Okay. And where did the treatment come from? Because I know it has something to do with deep sea diving. It probably uh, went back even further than that. I think it was 1632, believe it or not. Oh, um, it was, to be precise. Uh, to be <laughs> precise. But it came to light mainly in the diving industry. Um, when divers had the bends, and they got air, gas, embolism, bubbles in their, in their bloodstream. And the only thing that could solve and cure this was hyperbaric. And while they were doing this, uh, treating this brain insult because the air bubbles cause brain damage, um, they suddenly realized if it can help uh, people with the bends, with brain injury, um, why can't it do some other things such as stroke recovery and so on? And so things developed from there, found that it could heal wounds quicker than normal. Well, yeah. I, I mean, it all, it's all fascinating. I know mm. that the research I did around hyperbaric oxygen therapy, because like I said, I've had some sessions right. with you at your old clinic. I know that the, the NHS commissioned hyperbaric oxygen therapy for decompression illness, right. gas embolism, and acute carbon monoxide poisoning. But people come to see you for all kinds of reasons. And on your website, I've seen that you very clearly state uh, the evidence for the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy is not proven by randomized pros prospective control clinical experiment or trial. But that, that doesn't put people off coming to see you. Can you tell me more about the reasons they do come and see you? I think the main reason people come to see me, they often come desperate yeah. um, because they've tried uh, the pharmaceutical line and with the side effects of uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs, sometimes they get, all, many of them work and work well, some don't. Um, and so people now are much more, I think with the um, modern uh, communication, people research and look and yeah. are willing to try more. Um, but if you look at general medicine, um, there are some drugs that are prescribed for Parkinson's, for instance, um, and they are licensed for that. Each drug on the market are licensed for a certain disease, but many times the GPs and consultants will prescribe them out of license. Um, so they know that they've got a license for this drug, but it does help other conditions. And so, Although there is a license for treating people for carbon monoxide poisoning, for, for the bends, uh, for problem burns uh, within the NHS and approved, yet out with that, hyperbaric oxygen is now uh, showing to help many other illnesses with great effect. But this is, so you'd say anecdotally? Yes. Yeah. So the people who come and see you, why, why do they come and see you? I, I, th I think there's one that they're much more aware of um, that the oxygen really works 
and they've heard stories from other people who've come along with maybe uh, fibromyalgia and this type of thing right. and, and recovered and they've tried for years down the, the traditional conventional, uh, conventional and it's not yeah. worked so they've come and they went wow this works um, can you tell us some of the conditions that you've tended to in here the, the conditions that some of your clients have had that right. they've come to see you for Okay, um, fibromyalgia is one of them. Uh, fibromyalgia is not a disease, it's a name that has been tagged on to an immune deficiency. Mm. Um, it starts with chronic, fat chronic fatigue and then it goes on, people will say they've got lupus, then it comes into Lyme disease. It's a very big, big, wide area. And these people have struggled, struggled for years, they've been at the doctor's surgeries week in and week out, nothing's happening, get no answer. And they've heard, hey, this hyperbaric oxygen seems to help. And we've had many, many stories from, from, from patients and we say we do not cure um, we just know that oxygen only can do good and can help the body fight these, uh, th these uh, illnesses. And we've had many stories of patients come out saying, my life's been changed totally around. Now tell me about your uh, famous clients. Are you allowed to talk about your famous I clients? I can't mention them by name, oh, really. Oh, all right, right. Maybe, I, I, yeah. maybe you could maybe mention Novak because, we mention because Novak. he's a great uh, advocate for hyperbaric. <laughs> So you, so Novak has come here? Yes, he you? has, yes. And in which tank did he go in? He went in that one over that there. That one over there. If you're watching on Facebook, turn the camera around. Novak went in that tank. What did he, what did he do in the tank? Did he, because you can read a book in there, can't you? Um, he read, but mainly he just lay back and just rest, back. rest. Are you allowed to tell us why Novak came to see you? Uh, Novak has published and mentioned many, many times he uses hyperbaric oxygen, he's got his own chamber now at his own residence. Um, it's to aid his recovery uh, in between tennis sessions and also if he gets injured it can quicken up the healing by 30% which is quite, it's quite something. But given that you say on your website that there aren't any randomised control studies proving the use, it sounds like a lot of athletes have got a lot of faith in it. They've got a lot of faith in it because it works. Um, in America, the, the American football and basketball, most of the clubs have their own chambers now, and um, they swear by it. Um, do, I know, any, do any um, football teams from any maybe Premier League teams? Yes, we've had players come down from Newcastle United, yeah. Watford, Crystal Palace, um, just to mention a few of them. Um, we also did an experiment three years ago um, when a team was struggling. Um, they were at the foot of the table and they noticed that probably the last 15 minutes of each game they were losing silly goals, um, their decision making wasn't good. In the last 15 minutes of each game? Yeah. Um, so how does that relate to their oxygen level? Fatigue to the brain. Ah. Right? Um, and so we took th uh, these players um, we had them for three months and they came down two days per week and on those two days we gave them two sessions of hyperbaric per day and we discharged them before the end of the season and we, the performance coaches of the club noticed that the players performance had gone up by 38% on average and they were not losing uh, concentration in the last 10-15 minutes and it could be worth for football clubs uh, professionally to look at this um, uh, you just have to look at Sky Sport uh, as the results come through in the last 5 minutes, 10 minutes, goals are scored it's not because the legs are not moving because the brain's slowing down and oxygen can cure that Well it's, it's fascinating to hear the kind of anecdotal stories you have I've got a question here from Dave, he left his question on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, by the way, pop your questions in the comment section so I can uh, read them out to Rob. We can't give any medical advice, obviously, but we can speak in general terms about hyperbaric yep. oxygen therapy. Um, Dave wants to know, is just one session or multiple sessions required? And what's the minimum amount of time spent in the chamber? Right, one session, 
um, you certainly would find a difference in your in your in your mind, in your brain, your thinking the ne the next day. You certainly would find a benefit, but it depends what you're coming in for. Uh, if you've been coming in uh, for a chronic condition, then obviously it's going to take m more than one session. Um, I have a protocol that I've worked. I've been doing this now for just under 30 years, and 30 years' experience. I am pretty well clued up on how many sessions it will take for different conditions. And uh, so from five, uh, for just the, the well-feeling factor for, um, say, ladies want to make their skin look beautiful. But does it, does it re I mean, does that work, really? Can oh. you get in there as 65 and come out looking 25? Look at me. <laughs> How old are you? Rob? How old are you really? I'm 75. I, I, I want to go. Well, can it can it have actual genuine anti-aging benefits? That must that you haven't got proof of that, surely. Um, there there has been some some papers written uh, written on it. Um, your skin is your largest organ in your body, yeah. and your skin needs oxygen. Badly needs oxygen. You starve the the, the, the skin of oxygen, and you get necrosis of the tissue and you've got problems um, it does it does help we get quite a lot of uh, plastic surgeons sending patients to us after they do um, uh, sort of facelifts and facelift. so on they uh, come to you after they, facelifts yes we um, are in a posh part of london i can believe that yeah they come uh, and, after a facelift. and it speeds up the healing and gets rid of the scars really yes well I don't, but how can they tell whether it would have healed faster without it um, because I think the doctor, the consultants know themselves, the, the, the patients, how long it's taking to heal, and then they're sending them for hyperbaric now, and they're going, "Wow!" Um, so those patients then will go and tell to somebody, "I recovered in two weeks instead of two months," and then they'll say, "He's the greatest surgeon, so that he gets more work." In oh, he gets the he gets, <laughs> so, he gets the credit. But we don't mind. I'm only interested in promoting how great oxygen is so here's something i'm interested in yeah. um i recently snapped my collarbone in half and thank you facebook viewers who've been asking how my shoulder is it's um it's feeling good today i've just passed the six and there's week. no truth in that this is your new husband didn't do this to you my new husband did not do this to me yeah. Joey's not even a new husband anymore it's been a year i know no. <gasps> congratulations um, thank you very much um, but facebook viewers who were asking about my shoulder it's feeling okay today now imagine if I know you can't give medical advice, but um, if you had a broken collarbone and had an operation like I have with a metal plate and pins to fix it back together again, how many sessions would you have a week or a month? How would you I deal would have, with that? I would have three sessions uh, per week and I would have 21 sessions. In total? In total. Would that get me uh, Premier League ready? Exactly. <laughs> it speeds up... Um, Hyperbaric has got a lot of lots of clinical trials and data on the non-healing fractures. It speeds up the healing of fractures. Well, I hope it heals, and if it doesn't heal properly, if there's a non-union, I've heard about something called yes. a non-union. If that happens, then well, I'm coming non, back for those twenty-one sessions. Non-union fractures. Hyperbaric is the answer. Well, I, well, I'll hold you to that. Yes. Um, some questions about the price. How much is a session? Now, you don't have to give away no, exact... You, no, you're talk asking, Hundreds you're, or thousands? You, believe it or not, you're asking the wrong person. It's something I never deal with. I leave it to the, the other side yeah, of the business. Uh, I can believe that, actually. I, 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 yeah. I really am not interested. Um, can I say something that's interesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, as a clinic, we have a policy. We keep part of... Or the money that we, we take in and we hold back a special fund if somebody comes in here and they cannot afford treatment we can't do it to everybody but we feel it's, this is my heart my heart's to help to heal people not to take money from them but being a business you've obviously got to charge well, now I was about to say yeah. to everyone listening on, on the podcast on Facebook that when I used to see you last year yeah. for hyperbaric oxygen therapy um, there were clients that would come out and I, and you would tell me how you had treated them for free and it f felt to me like you had nothing to do with the money side of the business because 
well, to be honest, you're too busy doing this part. I, I, I just will not get involved in the money. So thing. you do treat some people for free because, yeah. well, like you said at the beginning, I guess some people see you out of desperation. Exactly. Try everything. Um, question here from Rob. Is there anything amateur athletes can take from the principles of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and apply it, but without the expense of paying for a session? Oh, I would love to treat you all for nothing. <laughs> um, the amateur athletic uh, people, it's very interesting. Um, three years ago, I took on two or three uh, amateur athletes just to prove my point that hyperbaric oxygen can uh, uh, improve performance. Um, I'll give you two examples. One lady, she was one of these crazy people that's multiple um, marathons, 10 marathons in 10 days. Oh yeah, uh, well we've had one of those on Health Hackers. Yeah. We've had an ultra marathon runner. And yeah. uh, but you got the first year she did it on her seventh marathon, she was walking rather than running, she mm. was so sore. And it was, it was up in the, the Lake District. When I heard about her story, I offered to help her and we loaded her with oxygen prior to the event. Well, on the eighth marathon of the eighth day, um, she be beat her best time and the tenth marathon of the ten day, she beat the record for a woman doing ten marathons in ten days. And then we had another... I feel like this is the same person I've had on health. It records. might be, it might be. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't know whether to reveal her name in case she, yeah, she wanted yeah. to see you in secret. So yeah, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And then there was another lady, she was um, a young mother on her first marathon. And uh, what you call it, she found even training five miles was killing her. So we took her on and we gave her oxygen. And I've got a story somewhere yeah. uh, there. Um, she's actually written a story saying how... Uh, without the hyperbaric oxygen, she was amazed. She just flew as a ship with no problems at all in, in the London Marathon. So it does work. Uh, I think, you know, we may consider, I, I'm probably speaking, I'm not on the business side, uh, I might get shot down with my partners for this, we may consider some special uh, pricing for London Marathon people um, pre preparing for next year. Uh, if, it, if they're prepared to lodge their names into a sort of a trial that we can record mm. um, what you call it. Because normally, yeah. normally um, on the price question, I think it is it is a hundred and something pounds yeah. per session. And in response to Rob's question about whether there's something an amateur athlete can do at home, I guess there's no kind of mini hyperbaric oxygen therapy no, the, the, kit that you can get are, on Amazon. Like they're soft chambers that are advertised, uh, made in China and that. They're personally a waste of space. They, they don't pressurise only up to about 1.2 bar. Um, uh -huh. um, I think you've got to be cautious. Hyperbaric is and oxygen is a uh, prescribed treatment. Um, yet many people use these soft chambers um, you zip yourself into them. Um, I wouldn't like to zip myself into if the zip didn't it didn't uh, it broke down halfway. How do you get? No. Out? no so this I, is something I, I don't like them. Yeah. Well, know. this is something people should be playing with. Yeah. And um, in fact, we've got some comments on Facebook from Donald, who's a bit worried about the danger factor, and he's also commenting that I wouldn't. I shouldn't put my phone so close to the tank. Is that a fire risk? All oh, right. It depends what type kind of uh, tanks you use. Um, there is what they call free-flowing oxygen chambers which are pressurised with oxygen um, where they don't wear a mask. Okay. Um, in those situations, uh, you could not take a telephone into the chamber. You, uh, um, you would have to put on cotton theatre clothes. Um, anything that would cause a spark would be, would be dangerous. So, in these intensive care chambers, which I have one in store, we don't use here, yeah. um, you wouldn't do. The types of chambers that we use, um, the chambers are pressurised with um, air and the oxygen is fitted snugly onto the face and there's very, very little oxygen, uh, free oxygen flying around in the chamber. Uh, maximum is, we've had a rating is 22% because we check it. And all the time, this air, it's pressurised, the, the tank has been circulated, so um, it's perfectly safe, the type of chambers that we okay. use. We do not store oxygen bottles, um, or do we store uh, our oxygen in liquid tanks. We use the latest uh, oxygen, medical oxygen concentrators from America. 
uh, where we take the oxygen out, the air that's here, we filter it and we put a high grade medical oxygen uh, into the chambers via the mask. Question from Mike, uh, isn't using hyperbaric oxygen therapy on athletes a bit of a cheat? Um, stop breathing uh, oxygen and they wouldn't be able to run at all. No, the, the, you cannot ban oxygen, it's perfectly normal, natural, it's not cheating. It's not cheating. Well, I mean, it's all got to come down to who, you're going who to decides you're going to, to try yeah, something you're going to, out. You're going, I mean, to, you're going to die as, for, for athletes. Is going on a special diet? Um, yeah, uh, is a diet uh, cheating? Is like? a diet cheating? No, it's just it's just using your common sense and taking advantage to natural healing, which is made available. Because what is the oxygen actually doing? Is it is it increasing the flow of red blood cells so that an injury in a muscle or bone would repair faster? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. Uh, question from Edward: Could hyperbaric oxygen therapy used be used for somebody who's got lung damage from smoking? Right, okay. Um, first of all, we would make a thorough check on the lungs and we would uh, hopefully get, get some MRI scans and see what's, what's in, mm. in the lungs. Um, yes, it does help, but we would certainly say to the person who's been smoking to stop smoking. As I said uh, previously, that we actually take um, uh, what you call carbon monoxide readings of our patients um, prior to them getting to the chamber. Um, if they're smoking, it um, blows their mind to see how much carbon monoxide is in their bloodstream. We had one. Uh, what is it really high? We had one lady, who, very famous person uh, in the fashion world, and she went right off the scale and she couldn't <gasps> believe it. And I said, "You're crazy, crazy, crazy! Not just your lungs. What's that doing to your heart? You, 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 you're killing yourself." And she had a hyperbaric oxygen therapy session. And we, we, we she dropped down immediately. Her, her, her reading dropped down by forty percent after one session. But well, but she it, but she go back out and well, smoke. Yeah, exactly. Went, and, you know, um, which is crazy. We did today um, with a, a young guy in, and he had a very safe region reading of uh, um, carbon monoxide po poison, poisoning just by walking around London. He was still in a very safe level. And even by putting him into the chamber, one session, we halved what he already had in his bloodstream. In one session, that's one one-hour session. And of course, this is licensed for hyperbaric, as, as carbon monoxide poisoning. So yeah. we would love um, to do a clinical trial on this. We, I actually wrote to the Mayor of London, invited him to come in. He wrote to Sadiq Khan. And asked him, would you like to come in and try hyperbaric oxygen, as he's on a bit polluted air. I've done some samples of people out in the street who are sitting at the cafes at the street and their readings are high. Bring them into the chambers and their reading goes down. It, you know, hyperbaric oxygen could be used for people who have got severe carbon monoxide poison, even just smokers and people walking around the streets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw a video of you on YouTube being awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award for your work in international hyperbaric medicine. Uh, how many years have you been doing this? 29 years. 29 years. And so what will be next for you? <laughs> um, I don't know. Or is this the dream? My, my dream's here. My dream, I would like to think that in the next 10 years we'll have multiple clinics all over the UK. Um, with a very, very high standard of care um, that each patient coming in will be monitored carefully and they will be given proper treatment and will be able to monitor and stack up case studies and put these into clinical studies to prove that hyperbaric oxygen um, is an authentic and a worthwhile medicine to go. And yeah, and hopefully some more studies too, so that of course, then yes. you know, you've got like, the evidence like to back this, it up. This week we are off to Denver, um, my partner and myself, to uh, Dr. Nur, who is the paediatrician who works alongside of us. Um, we're going to the medical conference, uh, Dr. Nur's doing a paper on Parca uh, Parkinson's uh, disease and how general medicine and hyperbaric together can help the people with Parkinson's. Now this is a, so you're investigating yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the great thing in this uh, annual conference, international conference, we get many uh, top doctors from all over the world who come with their experiences and there is already more clinical 
uh, recordings now. Uh, so Hypermar is taking off now, um, but it takes time. We haven't got the money of the drug companies to do big clinical trials. That's the biggest problem. Okay. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find out more about you? And the clinic here. The clinic. Um, or about or, oxygen therapy. In oxygen general. therapy. It's just Google that. If you go, if you do go hyperbaric oxygen London, your site, you find us there anyway. Um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Dot co dot uk. And you're personally not on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. I'm on. Quite a, no, I'm, I, I, I'm on Instagram now. You're on Instagram? I'm on right, Instagram. I'm tagging you. Tagging off this, I'm going to start following I'm you. I'm on Instagram. What, do you, uh, do you and know the, what your Instagram and, and the, name is? Don't ask me. You don't know what that I'm is. an old man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be on Instagram without knowing your handle. I well, don't know. Well, I'll put it in the show notes, people. I'll put uh, Rob's Instagram handle the in the show notes. And the clinic's also got one as well. And the well. clinic, yeah, we'll yeah. tag them too. And there's also one very interesting. There's a paediatric um, uh, hyperbaric um, Instagram as well. Thousands right. and thousands of pe uh, uh, people with children who have had brain damage at birth are now l reaching out to hyperbaric. They're beginning to reach out to hyperbaric yeah, and, to see if it might And we are most fortunate. We really have got not working in, in our staff, in our staff, but working very closely is, to, in my view, the best paediatrician in the world is Dr. Nur. It will be really interesting to see what happens with these studies, to see how it can help people moving forward now. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. I'm going to add one more question in if I can, because yep. it might benefit people. I found that when I was having hyperbaric oxygen therapies last year, the day that I had the therapy, that night, I slept like a baby. Why would that be? Did I imagine it? No, no, because your brain has, been, has got the uh, more, so your brain's not tired, it's not as, as, as get, being given you a life, and uh, your brain just relaxes more when, when, when it's under, under no pressure. It relaxes more when it's not tired, so when yeah. it's not wired. Wired, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that is, that is interesting. Thank, thank you for that. Thanks for squeezing that one in the end. I know you've got clients and there's to see. A, and, there's a, and there's another way to get to go sleep at night is... Is work 12 hours a day, six days a week, and then you sleep. And that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably longer. Um, thank you for joining us for this okay. podcast, Rob. Thanks. Nice to meet you again. And thanks, guys, for listening in. I'm here to help at any time. And feel free to... Aww. One of the clinic will speak well, to you. Well, so we've wrapped up the audio podcast, but here's yeah. what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm our Facebook is still happy with us. I'm for um, Emily to phone me up and, and I'll speak to them. Do you hear that, guys? Rob's happy for anyone to ring up and speak to them. I don't know, do you really want to commit to that? Because you might have a lot of people ringing you up for a chat now. I don't mind. <laughs> um, with I, the get face more, I get more on the music. Yeah, Facebook is... No, you're not. You're working 12 hours a day. <laughs> Facebook is... I'm going to show you the room again, in case you weren't with us at the start. So we're in, uh, we're in Rob's clinic in South Moulton Street. And I'm going to turn the camera around so you can get a good look at the tanks. There he is. There's Rob. This is the swanky clinic. So, um, I heard this tank here is a is a stronger tank. Is that true? You're getting in. There we go. Rob Pender, H box specialist in the H box tank. It's pretty big, isn't it? Have you ever had an athlete, maybe a basketball player who's too tall? I've had the European heavyweight boxing champion in here. European heavyweight boxing champion. Yes. You're allowed to reveal any more information? Yeah. No. P people know who he is. Okay. Yeah. He's been in there? Yeah. And right. the, the chambers are air conditioned as well. Let me lean in. Air conditioned air, chamber. Air conditioned chamber, and you see down there outside the air conditioned unit. The room's air conditioned, but the chambers themselves are air conditioned. Okay. I'm going to walk around here, show you the other tank while Rob, Rob gets out of that one. There we go. One last look inside a tank. So you get shut in there for an hour and you breathe uh, about 90, 97% oxygen. 97, yeah. 97% 97 oxygen. And FYI, the, the air that we breathe normally is only 21%. So Rob, give us a wave and I'll say bye-bye. Bye, Facebook -bye. Bye. Bye, Facebookers. Bye.